As we're looking at balloons in the skies and waiting for aliens to come flopping on the land here, there's a huge threat right here in America. I gotta give in now. I think I gotta live this now. I'm gonna be when I'm gonna kill this stuff real quick. I'm gonna go and take it to town. Cause I gotta be that king in the ring when I'm not killing me when I'm back with the will. Cause I am just stuck on the journey. You just know that I'm just going to say. Warriors rise. Grand rising. Good evening, warriors all over the world. My name is Coach JB, and what I do is I make the complex simple. I bring very complex macro and microeconomic topics and make it simple for people who want to understand what's actually going on. As we look this way, there's always another narrative going on this way. And we're all looking at balloons in the skies and hoping that aliens drop out of these spacecrafts. And there's something massive happening within our economy. As we sit in America, we have what's called a fiat currency, a fake currency. Every single dollar in America is someone else's debt. And what's happening right now is there's a massive switch in our economic sh system. We're all over leveraged. All central banks are over leveraged. We're in a debt crisis. The FDIC is preparing for bail-ins. And America is at risk of losing its dollar dominance. And do you realize what that will do to America when we lose our dollar dominance? Now, it's not about dominance over anybody, but I want to tell you, facts, figures, numbers, logic, other countries are preparing to de-dollarize. So it's just an interesting dynamic to see the biggest switch in financial history happening right underneath our nose as we're looking up at the sky of the UFOs and all these different things and worried about Rihanna at the Super Bowl and all those different things. I'm telling you, family, the biggest shift in generational wealth is happening right now. When everybody is fearful, you should be greedy. And when everybody is greedy, you should be fearful. Warren Buffett. If you'd like to coach with me privately, we open up 10 more spots for April 3rd. We're doing interviews right now. Click the link down below. Only apply if you're ready to get your shit together. It's a high, accounti pro high accountability program coaching with me for four months. So click the link down below. If you want to do it self-paced, you can also join the Warrior Academy. Okay, so let's dive right into it. So the thing I want to bring up is Brian Armstrong uh, from Coinbase. Uh, staking services are not a security. So this is the big narrative in America. America is making us look really, really bad. Gary Gensler, the SEC, or is this all by design, right? Jay Clayton initiated the case against Ripple, one of the best well-run, most well-run companies in the crypto space on December 20th, 2020, right? The one of the only regulated crypto companies that works with regulated institutions with their banks. So think about that for just a moment. And Brad Garlinghouse is the one sitting with regulators at the World Economic Forum, which is connected to BlackRock, which is connected to Coinbase, which is connected to Aladdin, right? Ripple has an LLC in Wyoming, and I guarantee they're going to eventually be a crypto bank, right? Coinbase will be a bank. Wells Fargo will be a crypto holder. Chase will be a crypto holder. Bank of America will be a crypto holder. And your whole financial system is going to be completely different. And what we're investing in is the infrastructure and the rails and the shovels and the tools as people try to get rich quick in cryptocurrency. Okay. But the big narrative right now, Coinbase staking services are not securities and will happily defend this in court if needed. So if you see this right here, he put out a blog. It was, oh, it's right here. Sorry about that. Uh, Coinbase staking services are not a security. And here's why. Staking is not a security on the U.S. Securities Exchange, nor under the Howey test. Trying to superimpose securities laws onto processes like staking doesn't help customers at all. Instead, it imposes unnecessarily aggressive mandates that will prevent U.S. consumers from accessing basic crypto services and push users offshore to unregulated platforms. So the SEC, what he's saying here, is supposed to be protecting us. But by doing this, and this is a fact, they're actually pushing crypto investors offshore into unregulated exchanges unregulated. They're doing the exact opposite of what they said they're here to do is protect us. Okay. By going after Kraken and shutting that down by, you know, if they go after Coinbase, he said he's going to take him to court and it's going to be an interesting dynamic as we go through. So why is America the one that's resisting this? Why there's something happening here, fam? Why is Jay Clayton sitting on the board now for the FDIC that's preparing for bank bail-ins? Think about that. Jay Clayton is one that initiated the case against Ripple, one of the most well-run crypto companies that has a cross-border payment that can change the infrastructure of the banking system. He consults for a cryptocurrency fund. He sits on, go just go look up how many boards he sits on that are connected to the financial system. 
Is it all lockstep? You make a move, you make a move, you do this. Well, what I do know is I'm focused on what's actually happening, not what they say. Crypto firm Paxos faces SEC lawsuit over Binance US token. So SEC, Gary Gensler is going after everybody. Is it by design to shake up the industry to keep people out of it, to try to push Americans to not get into cryptocurrency because banks are about to bail in? And if you had the opportunity to go get 20% in an exchange versus at your local bank that's giving you 0.003%, would you want that opportunity? Absolutely. So maybe they're trying to slow down the process as they restructure the banking system. And as they bring in crypto into the banking, so the infrastructure can keep continuing on and the casino can move over distributed ledger technology. Remember, we have no money. We're over 120% debt to income ratio. We're in a debt crisis. Our government has to borrow to pay the military, to pay for pension funds. They had to raise the debt ceiling to pay for post postal workers' pensions. People have worked 40, 40, 50 years of their life, their careers uh, excuse me, their future, their finances, their retirement are at risk. Okay. And on the back end of this year, I believe there's going to be a massive pullback in the 401, uh, excuse me, well, the stock market, which it, uh, most 401ks are attached to. There's going to be a massive pullback um, in job markets. There's going to be uh, companies laying people off. We're going to go into a nice, nice dip in recession where we're going to be able to get very, very wealthy if you do this correctly. I love uh, her, uh, Hester Pierce. She's called the crypto mom. SEC Commissioner Pierce publicly rebukes her agency, Gensler, on crypto regulation. This was on February 9th. So I reported this to you guys, but SEC Commissioner uh, issued public dissent to her own agency enforcement actions against crypto Kraken. Pierce said the current regulatory uh, environment made it impossible for crypto related offerings to even gain approval. Pierce uh, dissent came from the SEC. Gary Gensler's continued to crack down on crypto related offerings and companies. His own people within the SEC are rebuking his policies. So what that tells me is there's something happening behind the scenes. The moves that he's making are from a higher level. There's something happening. We're saying you do this, you do this, you do that. OK, so think about that for just a moment. All right. So let's dive into what we came for. Here's where the biggest risk comes in for the American dollar. OK, let's take cryptocurrency out of it. Let's look at our financial system and our monetary system. Um, I posted this on Twitter. People are like, you know, this, that's not going to happen. Well, somebody put an interesting tweet out there that said, you know, it, people have been talking about this for 100 years. The key with what they said is 100 years. Right. Look at the lifespan of a currency. We're coming up on the end of a lifespan for our currency. Number one, it's a fiat currency. It's a fake currency. It has zero value other than our belief system in it. And the reason why it has value in it, only reason it holds value is because of the petrodollar. And if you take a look at this here, this is a GDP of the BRICS country, which is China, India, Brazil, Russia, and South Africa. By 2027, look at their GDP and look how much it's increased around since Bitcoin's inception. Boom. Is there something interesting happening here? I, I'm really working hard to connect the dots. We had the financial collapse in America in between 2005 going into 2008. Okay, There was a conversation around BRICS around 2006, 2007. BRICS were created. China, India, Brazil, Russia, and South Africa came together as a dominant force in 2009. Bitcoin's inception was created. In America, we turned on the printing machine Full blast. If you look at our printing machine since 2009, it's gone straight up just like this chart here. OK, so our printing machine went on full blast. And right now, America is dominating all of the currencies because of our interest rates and other countries are getting pissed. Now, this was interesting. This was back in 2000 or oh, sorry, this was where they snubbed. Uh, here we go. So this was January 1st, 2023, how Saudi Arabia's crown prince snubbed Biden repeatedly to forge tides with authorities, China and Russia. So he keeps snubbing he, that. This is back in January. He was snubbing Biden and saying, no, I'm going to join forces with China and Russia. Now, if that happens, if this happens right here, if Saudi Arabia uh, joins BRICS, it's game over, in my opinion. So if they join BRICS, they're going to de-dollarize. They're going to remove this petrodollar. The petrodollar came in 1974 when I think it was President Nixon who detached us from the gold standard, went to the Saudis to keep us in dominance and said, listen, we're going to protect you guys with arms and military protection if you guys trade all oil in dollars. Well, if they work to de-dollarize from the American dollar, 
it's done. The dollar dominance is done. Saudi Arabia is interested in joining the BRICS group of the world's five major developing economies, as well as Shanghai Co Corporation Organization, according to Russia's ambassador kingdom. OK, so they're working to come together. The five BRICS nation, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa currently account for over 40 percent of the world's population and nearly a quarter of the global GDP. Meanwhile, Russia and China lead Shanghai Corporation Organization. Um, OK, so that's that's the dominance here. But look at this. This is without this is without Saudi Arabia coming on board. OK, and then you're starting to see the BRICS countries uh, where the next uh, excuse me, the BRICS countries where next and what impact on the global economy. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, originally an informal group leading emerging economies in 2000 have since experienced a very different growth press path since their significant global economy at the time considerable geopolitical uncertainty remains an open question so when they came together they just started to dominate they're starting to rise up and so i want to show you this so expansion of BRICS would offer benefits across the globe over time BRICS could become more influential than the g7 countries even if this takes a few decades certainly through the BRICS has direct impact on on many more people the economies that made up the G7 this year were Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom, and the United States, and the European Union. At home, about 16% of the world's population, while the BRICS economies account for 41%. Okay. On the other hand, G7 members account for 62% of the global economy, while the BRICS economies account for a little more than a quarter. And the average per capita GB, GP, GDP, it was gross domestic product, of the G7 economies which, which is six times larger than BRICS. Okay, so now here's where the tipping point comes. This is what I want to talk about. If Saudi Arabia starts to join or works to join the BRICS countries and they do start to de-dollarize, they start to take um, trading oil out of American dollars, guys, that's dangerous. It's very dangerous for the American dollar. So here's what I'm seeing happening. Now, if you're an economist or anything, please help or jump on my channel and interview with me. Like, like I'm trying to understand this from my level, understanding, studying, you know, all Ray Dalio's books, going through CBA executive banking school. I understand from my level that banks are in a liquidity crisis. Okay. I know that Basel three rules changed uh, in uh, March, 2020. Well, we had the C word looking this way. Banks have to hold gold on reserves for riskier assets. We know that central banks started stacking gold from 2020 to 2023. Okay. FDIC is meeting and getting very serious about bail-ins. We saw the meeting. We dove into that. Jay Clayton joined the board of directors for the FDIC. Why is he on the board? And he consults for cryptocurrency firms. Okay. We got Gary Gensler, who was a head MIT professor for cryptocurrency. Okay. He also was part of the CFTC at one point. He's deep inside of Wall Street, right? So he knows a lot of people and connections in the financial system. China is massive in regards to our economy. They own most of our debt. 33% of our debt is outside of America. We have the most amount of debt outside of our own country. We do have the largest GDP. Our debt to income ratio is over 120%. So we're screwed. We have to borrow to survive. And China is deep in our ecosystem, our education system. So what do you think is happening, fam? Comment down below. What do you think is happening? I'm proud to be an American. I you know, grew up in America. I built companies in America. Um, you know, I'm very grateful for the freedom. I served my country as well. You know, I served in the United States Coast Guard. I spent uh, five years in the military. So I'm, this is an anti-American. These are facts, figures, numbers, logic. This is not a fear tactic. This is not fear mongering. These are things that are actually happening as we're looking at the sky at UFOs. Our monetary system is about to flip. And the great thing about it is you don't let a good crisis go to waste. That's what they say. And that's all we're doing here at the Warrior Academy. We're just not letting good crisis go to waste. We're not against anybody. We're not against government. We're not against anybody. We don't have any enemies other than ourselves when we look in the mirror at night or we're getting our shit together. So this is the greatest time in human history. It's no reason to panic. This has happened in history over and over again. There's no one invisible enemy stopping you from making decisions or earning extra income and investing in these speculative assets that could absolutely change the world. What's stopping you is your inaction. What's stopping you is listening to people who are in the old paradigm. What's stopping you is listening to people who are not wise counsel, who have never invested properly, who have never studied or indoctrinated in the old financial system. That's what's stopping you. So you need to change your environment. You need to reprogram your subconscious mind to this new paradigm. You need to understand how wealth actually works and how the elites do it. And then you move on from there. 
and know that this is the greatest opportunity in human history. So I love you guys. I appreciate you. I hope this information reaches you well. Send this to a friend or family member. A lot of this type of stuff doesn't get a lot of reach. So it helps when you like, subscribe, comment, or you send the video to somebody else. If you want to coach with me privately, it's a high intense accountability program, weekly accountability calls, subconscious mind programming, goal setting, vision board creation. I go over my portfolio, my five pillars of wealth. We go through budgeting. Basically in four months, we completely transform your life from the inside out. We learn your unique blueprint and your human design as well. So click the description down below to interview, to get one of the spots coming up on April 3rd. Warriors, rise, get your shit together. Let's go.